Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone and welcome to my channel. Today I have a 2015 6.7 liter power stroke that had a catastrophic uh, fuel system failure, which means that the CP4 grenaded and sent metal throughout the system. And the repair for that is to replace the entire fuel system. Now this is a really big repair. You're over $15,000 to do this repair. So you don't want to do it again. Unfortunately, if you live in California, you only have one option and that's to put a new fuel system kit back in it with a CP4. So SNS Diesel has come up with a DCR pump, which this is the traditional CP4 pump that's original. And this is the DCR conversion kit from SNS Diesel. Which changes the pump. The old one is a CP4, the new one is a DCR. That pump in design cannot fail like a CP4. So therefore it's not going to have the failures that the CP4 had. But in California, it's not approved yet. This customer, they wanted it, we sold it, uh, tried to order it and they, they will not sell it to anyone in California unless you can absolutely be on the shadow of a doubt, prove that it was, it is for complete off-road use. So we opted for the SNS diesel uh, filter kit uh, it's a disaster prevention kit, and what it does is when the, if, when the CP4 does fail again, it will send the metal into a filter. You replace the pump, the filter, those lines, and basically get a new kit and put a new pump back in it. That way you don't have to replace the injector, the rails, drop the tank, drain the tank, clean the tank. You know, it's a lot of work. So we're going to get started on this filter kit. Let's go. Here is the SNS disaster 6.7 power stroke disaster prevention kit that we're going to be installing on this truck first step is we have to get to the fca on top of the high pressure fuel pumps so you're going to remove your crankcase breather assembly you're going to remove your upper intake manifold and your lower intake manifold make sure you don't get any dirt down in your high pressure fuel pump you're going to remove the two T25 Torx screws and remove the FCA, which is the fuel control actuator out of the top of the high pressure pump. The first step in putting in this disaster prevention kit is getting this block right here. You're going to get the bag. It's going to have two O-rings and two bolts. These are going to be Allen bolts and they're going to be longer than your original FCA bolts because these bolts are going to bolt down your FCA through the block into your high pressure pump. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to put your FCA in the block. Go ahead and put it in. Make sure your O-rings are lubed up. Put it in and put the bolt in that's furthest to the front because that one is going to not be able to get out once you have this assembly in. It's going to look like that. That's what the bolt looks like when it goes through the FCA and through the block. Now these are four millimeter Allen head bolts that are going to bolt that to the high pressure pump. Now I'm going to come over here and get my carbine tools, extra long mech, uh, metric hex uh, sockets, and I'm going to grab the four millimeter to put these bolts in. So you're going to run those bolts in evenly. But what I like about the Carbine Tools extra long hex is that it's only hex on the end and it's round all the way up. So in the front right here where you're in between the FCA and the intake, if you have an extra long hex that's hex all the way up, then it gets stuck on the intake as you're turning it. This turns smooth. You're going to go ahead and torque it to 60 inch pounds. So you're going to let the hose sit in its normal orientation like this. And then we're going to slide the lower intake in and torque it to 18 foot pounds. It may be easier to pull your intake, your, uh, your cack tube back and slide it onto your intake as you slide it in. Don't forget to put the clip on the tube and lube your O-ring. So lube up your boot for your, your, where your intake goes onto your turbo. This one is a single boot. Uh, the older ones are a double boot. Don't forget the connector for your, EG, for your EGR throttle plate. 
And also you're going to have a connector here for your EGT. And then the last thing is this vacuum connector. If you disconnected this hose, don't forget to put it back on. You may have noticed that when I put this intake on, that the FCA was not plugged in. That's because I forgot. I was focused on the video and the job and, and everything else. So anyways, make sure your FCA is plugged in. Make sure it's clicked and make sure it's locked. Next step, you're gonna put your EGR uh, exhaust tube on and don't forget your connector under here. The two bolts are 89 inch pounds. So once you get the lower intake on and the EGR tube, you're gonna put your upper intake on. You wanna make sure that this hose right here is positioned kind of behind the upper, where the, where the thermostat is, where the upper hose goes. Um, and for the gaskets, uh, Felpro makes a gasket set we don't normally use Felpro. I either use Motocraft or Molly. Uh, in this case, we were in a pinch, so I had to get the Felpro ones, but there's the part number if you want to do that. Now, I totally made a mistake on this one here. I was so focused on the video, making sure I did it right, trying to figure out the fuel contamination kit, and also getting bounced around that I forgot to put the low fuel pressure uh, um, pipe assembly in, into the high pressure pump. So luckily I was able to reach down there, get the plugs unplugged and get it in and get the bolt started, get it all tightened up, even though it's under the intake. So don't forget to put that in. So this is the kit we're gonna be putting in right here. There's the number right there. So here's some of the parts for this. This is the block right here that mounts to the firewall that your filter goes onto. Very nicely done, it's very pretty. Uh, it looks really good. So this is something I didn't have to do on this 15. On the older style, on the lower intake, right above the FCA, there is a little casting block that sticks straight down. And if you have that square casting block sticking down, you have to grind it off. Uh, actually, the very first intake I ever pulled on a 6.7 was had that square block, and I had a really hard time getting it on, so I actually ground it off. You're going to go ahead and lube up your O-ring on your filter. Then we're going to take our block here and wipe off that surface there for your filter. You're going to get this bag out that's got your two fittings and two O-rings in it. You're going to put your O-rings on the fittings. You're going to take your block. You're going to thread the fittings into each side of the block with a deep 15, and you're going to torque them to 120 inch-pounds, and then put the filter on. So you're going to get the bag out that's got the bracket and that hardware right there. And you're also going to get the bag that has these, these two little rubber pieces here with the two nuts. And you're going to thread those into the back of the filter housing. Just like that. You're just going to do them snug. Then you're going to take the bracket. You're going to put it on with the nuts with a 7 16 wrench. And you're just going to snug up the nuts. Now they tell you to do this step now. Uh, I ended up taking it back off. So what you're going to do is on the firewall, you're going to, you have a ground screw right there with an eight millimeter head. You're going to take it out. Then you're going to take your ground and you're going to put it on top of the bracket, put the bracket on top of where the ground screw goes. And you're going to use this screw right here. And it's going to be a four millimeter Allen. And you're going to run it in and snug it up on the firewall. Now, I did this step, and I had to take it back off because I had to do the fuel line stuff underneath. The hose attached to the block that mounts to your high-pressure pump under your FCA is going to come along here. It's going to go under your wiring harness. It's going to be attached to your fuel line there with a zip tie. It's going to come around your oil fill, and the lower portion of it is going to connect to the feed pipe. And the top portion is going to connect to the front portion of your fuel filter connection. This step was the sketchiest part of this whole job. So the part of the fuel rail that sticks straight up attaches to this fuel line right there. This is normally pointed down. You're supposed to hold the plastic part of the hose and twist the fitting inside of the plastic hose. It's a little tricky to get to go in at first, but once you get it to move, it'll go. Just make sure you hold that hose tight. Don't twist the hose up. I ended up having to take the filter back off uh, to be able to do this. You're going to have two fuel hoses left. 
you're going to have that quick connect. You're going to have the blue one and the blue one. Those are the same. That one's a different size. That one's going to go on that port sticking straight up. So the fuel hose that we twisted straight up, the barb, the, the metal end is going to go right there. And it's going to lay on the passenger side of the fuel rail. And this is the other one, the one that we connected that was a different size right there. So you're going to have the hoses connected there. You're going to put the zip tie around the factory fuel line and connect it to the rubber hose just like that right there. So just the way it was laying in the truck, this is the one that connects to the fuel rail, which goes to the driver's side of the filter housing. And then the one with the barb goes on. So this on that side right there on the driver's side, that one comes from the actual fuel rail. And the one on the passenger side comes from the actual fuel line. So I had disconnected the fuel lines on the front of the filter and on the, the fuel feed pipe uh, to get them out of the way. And so I've got that all reconnected. And this one right here, when you push the plastic piece through and you see the tabs on the back, it's locked in. Don't forget to put your charge air pipe back on, your oil fill... Uh, all that stuff, and you should be good to go. After watching this video, you should feel pretty confident putting this filter kit in, whether you had a CP4 failure and you're doing a fuel system, or you're just or you're just installing this kit to keep from having to put an entire fuel system in it. So, thanks for watching. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell. You get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Thanks for watching. See you next time.